In this video, I'm gonna talk about my first impressions with this phone, the Honor Magic 6 Pro. I have this for a day now and I think I'm in a very good place to give you my first impressions. And I'm mainly going to speak about the general hardware aspects of the phone. Then the combination of hardware and software always in smartphones nowadays, the camera. And I'm also going to talk about some software related things. So without further ado, let's start with the hardware. And to be honest, the hardware is really gorgeous. I love the hardware. I love the back of the phone with the frosted glass that also provides some grip so it's not so slippery. I like the accent around um, the camera bump. Also the device in general feels like it's made out of one, um, one piece because the sides are rounded, the display is rounded and also the back is rounded so it, it feels really good in the hand. It's really kind of a palm pleaser to be honest and everything is really uh, manufactured to a very high standard. The buttons on the side feel great. So it's really a joy to hold in the hand. Also, I don't have a problem with weight distribution. I heard this in some of the reviews that it's quite top heavy. I don't think it's a problem. It has a good weight to it, so it doesn't uh, feel flimsy. It feels quite substantial, but um, it's also thin at the same time. So. Hardware-wise, really, really an excellent um, phone, I have to say. Then coming to the display, I think the display is perfectly fine. It's a really great display. Um, some reviewers were saying it's not the highest pixel density. It just, it just has 453 ppi, but I think it's more than enough. I never think it could be sharper. So. Um, don't think it's not a sharp display. It's very sharp. It doesn't have um, above 500 ppi like the Galaxy S24 Ultra, for example, but honestly, you don't notice it. It's very bright. I love the colors of the display, so um, it's really a joy to look at. Honestly, what I have to get used to is the curved display. Yes, curved displays are great because you have very minimal display bezels, so at first glance, that looks very good. But it's also problematic because content that is displayed on the sides will get distorted. You have text or other um, content elements there. And additionally, since the display is not only curved, but also it has rounded edges, some display elements will be cut off. And also I noticed that it could be problematic with some apps that are not uh, perfectly optimized um, and this is the keyboard you can see that the button down here gets somehow squished into the um, edge so in general really awesome display but I'm not sure if I prefer a curved display uh, over a flat display I think flat displays are better but it's not a downer then you might have noticed that there is a element here on top display cutout that is both hardware and software. So the hardware part of this display cutout is the 3D time of flight sensor that allows for secure face unlock. And I have to say, this is really awesome to have because you're now able to unlock your phone also in near darkness. So the display will not get brighter in order to you, uh, allow the cameras to recognize the face because it's a time of flight sensor. This works really similar to Face ID um, and this is really um, a quality of life um, aspect because you are now very easily able to unlock your phone and also because it's a secure way of unlocking it allows also for authentication like in one password for example and it's also very fast so most of the times when the app opens and requires authentication it's directly um, already confirmed so this is really great i like to have it and the software part of the display cutout is the so-called magic capsule that is similar to the dynamic island of apple phones so i just started an audiobook and you can see that um, it is depicted that it's playing and also you have um, the album art in the Mag Magic Capsule and when I now click on it, it will enlarge the player and I'm now able to pause playback or skip playback. So this is great. This also works with music apps, for example. And what I like, if I now, for example, start a timer and 
swipe it away, then the timer will be displayed and you can see that there's something behind this. So the audiobook card is still opened and when you click on it, you have on top the timer and on the bottom you have the audiobook. So this is great. And now let's come to the camera. So in general, I think the results of the camera are quite good. My first images I took, um, I'm really happy about. And um, in general, the images are quite contrasty, but you also have the option to use three presets. Um, the default one is vibrant. Then you also have authentic and authentic is kind of a dramatic look, look. So I don't know if this is really authentic. I think it's more, dim um, it's more dramatic. And then you also have uh, a natural look. So if you read uh, in reviews that the images are oversaturated, I think it could be due to um, the photo styles that were used. So I'm always switching between natural and uh, vibrant because um, the authentic picture style is a little bit too extreme for my taste. Then speaking about zoom, there was a lot of discussions um, about the 100x zoom quality not being as good as they advertised and honestly 100x is not usable and also 30x I wouldn't use, I would use up to 10x because I think up to 10x the quality is uh, quite good um, and above 10x it gets kind of sketchy and it really depends how the lighting conditions are. But keep in mind, yes, it's digital zoom, but there's actually a difference between using the camera app and using 30x or 100x than using um, a 1x photo and cropping in and post. The results are really different. Uh, when you crop in in post, it's quite of quite pixelated and uh, not usable at all because the 100x photo will go through the imaging pipeline and it will use also some AI magic, uh, I imagine, to enhance and improve the quality of the photo. And this will not happen if you just take a 1x photo and crop in in post. So a lot of people are saying, hey, just use 1x all the time and then crop in. It's not the same also if you would use 5x, 10x, for example, um, it's different. Um, it's you get a different um, result. But I think um, let's just look at the photos in the phone so that you get a, a better idea of the quality of the camera. Okay, let's start with looking at some photos, and this is the photo I took during my unboxing, and that's the 100x photo. And as you can see. It's not really usable because you lose details here and the text is not readable and also here is an, um, a logo or an icon that's not visible anymore. Also these flowers, 100x, um, it's a gimmick and this phone, not really usable. Then I went on our balcony and took some photos. So this is the ultra wide camera and actually very nice and then that's the one x also i think this is actually very very good photo and also the 2.5 x and also this i'm quite happy with also um, with the colors but you can see that it's in general a quite contrasty image then i used another photo style so the first one was vibrant and uh, this is now yeah, this is now natural. This one was vibrant. So the natural is more muted, but still with quite some contrast. Of course, the image quality per se is not affected by the photo style. It's just um, the colors. And then you have authentic and you can see that there is definitely um, a difference between um, natural, vibrant and authentic. Also looking at the dark uh, places, dark areas um, of the photo, it's even more contrasty. So it's, I would say, authentic is more like a, a dramatic picture profile. Uh, speaking about consistency between the cameras, 
um, there is quite some variation between the ultra wide and then the normal as you can see uh, in the colors both are both photos are taken with a natural picture profile this is even more visible when switching to authentic look at the colors of authentic and then use the one x so consistency is not the best especially between ultra wide white and tele so keep this in mind yeah then uh, portraits are sometimes a little bit his hit and miss um, edge detection is similar to the magic v2 it's sometimes not that good as you can see at the shoulders here and i also sometimes don't like the colors sometimes portrait mode looks I mean, the skin temperature, it's, it's, it's a little bit off. Also, I think it's too pale. So um, I need to do some further testing also here. There is really rough smoothing of the edges. So I think they definitely um, need to work on their uh, portrait mode because um, it's better than on the Magic V2, but it's still not on uh, the same level as the S24 Ultra, for example. Also here you can see that there is really some smoothing of um, the edges. Um, the glasses are fine. Some phones also have problems with um, edge detection in glasses, but I don't like the colors. It's in contrast um, to the normal photo mode. It's, I think, not enough contrast and also colors are off so yeah not so happy I mean, it, it, it really looks desaturated and almost uh, the black and white style um, so no nah, not the best then um, this is a little bit kind of a low light situation and i'm quite happy with the results actually details are preserved there is some visible noise but not bad so but also quite high contrast in this image so this really uh, is true for most of the images you take with the Ma uh, with the magic 6 pro but details are great as you can see here also a little bit um, low light situation because it was a dark and dull day yesterday but um, i like it I also like the fact that the images are not looking as overprocessed as with some other phones. So sharpening is really under control here. And also there is um, not a lot of um, noise reduction taking place. So this is what I really like. I can uh, live with uh, contrasty photos, but I cannot live with overprocessed and over sharpened photos. So really happy to see this some more images and also here in low light really happy to see that noise is well under control and also um, the image processing yeah my watch here you can see there is a little bit too much um, processing because there are some smeared details but in general if you zoom out think it's a really a really nice shot then i went outside and tested the zoom range of uh, the phone so this is the ultra wide this is the one x and um, also notice that consistency here is better between the ultra wide and the wide i don't notice uh, dramatic changes in saturation color and contrast um, perhaps the one x is a little bit con more contrasty but not by a lot 1x then you have the 2.5x let's zoom in here in the grass i think it looks very good then this is the 5x so now we're starting to get into digital zoom territory but i think 5x still very usable then we have 10x and um, i think with 10x you notice that the image starts to fall apart a little bit um, and fine details are lost 
and uh, we start to see some smearing also here in the sand and then 30x and I would say 30x is really the, the, the maximum you should use. Look at the ropes, it really starts to get mushed together. So for me 30x is the maximum. Then I also tested the zoom range with this building here, ultra wide, then the 1x and here you can see there is a little bit of variation between the two but it's manageable and not bad. Then the 2.5x, the 5x, Yeah, I mean, zooming in, you can start to see some problems, but in general, very usable. Then the 10x. It's also, I think, in general, it's okay. Don't try to zoom in now. <laughs> then the 30x. And this is a territory where I would say not usable anymore. And the 100x. This is just... I would say that's just modern art. If you want to create modern art, then the 10 egg, then the, the 100x is great. Then macro mode, um, re really happy with macro mode of the camera. I think it looks great. Um, a lot of detail. Not, um, not a lot of light available at this point. Uh, so definitely will be much better if you have enough light, but macro mode is great. Now this is a scene where I used uh, average metering, so the whole scene was metered and the phone tried to get to a good exposure. And I think it's a little bit, yeah, again, too contrasty and too dark, quite a kind of moody look. And these are the, the picture styles, right? So this is the natural this is the vibrant and this is the authentic and you can see that the authentic is really um, a little bit artsy, right? Too contrasty in, in my opinion. Then I um, also meted for the church so that the exposure will be set according um, to the church. This is the natural and the vibrant. Honestly, I don't see a lot of difference between natural and vibrant. Let's look at the at the tree it's very very similar but then the authentic gives um, a lot of difference right so this is a this is not very contrasty and this gets more contrasty but as you can see there are use cases where the authentic can really deliver good results in this case I prefer um, the authentic picture profile. Keep in mind it's important to also set the exposure correctly, right? Because here I think it's too dark because also the phone tried to expose for the sky. I think this is a really um, a good image and, as, and when you zoom in you can see how much detail you have. And um, I'm also again here really happy to see that you don't have this over processed and over sharpened look. So that's very nice to see. And these are basically my first impressions of the Magic 6 Pro's cameras. Uh, I'm really happy, I have to say, but I definitely need to do more testing to get um, a better idea how the cameras perform, what their weaknesses and strengths are, also how they compare to other phones like the S24 Ultra, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, the Magic V2, the OnePlus Open. So I plan to do a lot of testing because I know that cameras are important uh, for you folks and also for me cameras are important so I want to really assess the quality of these cameras but first impressions are very positive. And the last part of the video will be about software so especially what does Magic OS bring in contrast to Magic OS 7 and for that let's change to the table and I will give you a more closer look to the software. Okay, now let's speak about software and we also can try the fingerprint scanner. So in general this works very well and also very fast um, 
and in combination with face unlock it's really a great thing. Um, so this device, the Honor Magic 6 Pro, runs Magic OS 8. It's actually the first phone that is delivered with Magic OS 8. And the main thing about Magic OS 8 is the introduction of Honor's own large language model. Um, so um, yeah, kind of an AI that runs on device and is trained not with publicly available data, but will be trained also with user data. So um, in general, the device will get more intelligent the more you use it and is also then able to recommend special services and apps um, when you use the phone. And this large language model, the Magic model, allows for some new features that you can find under yeah, Assistant, for example. So um, it is able to give you AI suggestions um, about some apps you might want to use at a special day of time. You will have magic text, so it's, it's possible to extract text from images, for example. And then you have Magic Portal, and this is new, and this is exclusive to the Magic 6 Pro um, at the moment, and you have to do an update to get Magic Portal. And what is Magic Portal? And these are the functions it, um, it has at the moment. You can swipe through them. You can touch and hold text to activate Magic Portal. And um, after activating Magic Portal with a touch and hold, you can drag selected content directly to any app. The same is true and possible with images. So you can uh, touch and hold an image and then drag it to the Magic Portal to share it with another app. And I will show you in a moment how this works. This is also possible with screenshots and um, so you can try it out here. First you can activate it, then you can also um, configure some custom services you want to see in Magic Portal and then this is how it works. For example, you can um, select text and then touch and hold and then you can see that the sides of the screen will get blue indicating that you will enter Magic Portal. And as you can see, when, you, when I now start, um, continue to pull it to the side, um, the AI will suggest some apps that are able to receive the input, for example, Notes, Maps, WhatsApp, or Gmail. And I can now pull it to one of the apps that are suggested, release, and then it will create a new note with the text I selected. And this is also possible with images for that. Let's just go into the gallery app. If you have this image, for example, I can touch and hold and then pull to the side. And now you can see that there are new apps. So I can put it into a note, into Gmail, into WhatsApp. I can directly share it to Instagram, for example. And what is really cool, I can also immediately launch an image, image search. So imagine I took this photo and I want to know where, where it was taken. Um, I can touch and hold, pull it to the side and then release above search image. And then a Google image or Google lens search will be performed and I can see that this was taken at the church inside University Hospital here in Düsseldorf. So this is a really nice function, very similar to uh, circle to search, although I'm not able to directly circle or mark a uh, part of the image, um, but a, really a nice alternative. And um, this is also working with text, for example, when I now mark the text on the home page, I can touch and hold put it to the side, you can see um, yeah, that this is now available. What's also nice, if I have an address, I can mark the address and pull it to Google Maps and then there will immediately be the option to do navigation. So that's, that's uh, Magic Portal. Then there are some other functions like Magic Ring, for example, that allows for a greater variety of data to be seamlessly exchanged between devices. You have connected camera, for example, connected input, 
uh, or multi-device screen sharing. This is also facilitated by the LLM. And you also have AI video edits, for example. So there are a lot of features and functions that are only possible because of the large language model. So this is um, the main thing about um, Magic OS 8. Then you have additional features like, for example, more options to configure your home screen. So if you go into settings and then home screen and style, and this is similar to Magic OS 7, but now if I, for example, go to um, the always on display, I'm now also able to select the full screen always on display so that it will just be darkened or I can say I want just partial screen like it was known with um, Magic OS 7. So that's great. And also with the lock screen style, there is more that I can uh, do now. I can um, change the color of the clock. I can change the style of the clock. I'm able to select a lock screen style. So you have these magic lock screens where you can um, have a kind of a magazine um, type. You can also change the image um, to your liking. Then discard, I'm sorry. Um, you have stuff like this, so you can kind of also drag and move and uh, zoom in and then you can choose the decoration, other numbers, for example, if you have a lucky number. So there is definitely more options to customize your phone and customize the lock screen. Um, and you can also get a preview of the home screen and the lock screen. What I also like is that it's now possible to blur the home screen, right? Some wallpapers are kind of busy and I don't like this. So I can now also blur the wallpaper and this is also great. Then Magic OS 8 also changed the big folders, right? You know, when you have a folder, you can long press and say enlarged. When you now again long press, you are able to change the size of the folder like this. And now you have just three icons and it's a kind of elongated folder. You can do it also in the other way that you have the folder like this. Um, so this gives some nice options. For example, to have only three icons stacked on top of each other. Again, if you click, then the folder will be opened. I think that's very nice because sometimes I only have three apps that I want to group together and I don't want to have um, them into uh, place into a big folder like this. And it's now also possible to do some things with icons. So for example, let's take the gallery icon. Put it on the home screen and you can see what you can do up here. So if I touch and hold, you can see that I have the handles and I now can enlarge this and get more options that are app related and I can have it small and big like this. So for example, I can immediately launch the search, right? Um, via this option. So these are kind of app sub-services and sub-features um, that you are able to launch via this enlarged icon. And this is available for most apps and basically shows some context. Amazon app, you can enlarge it and for example, immediately launch Amazon search and can directly search for an article. And um, I think that's a really a nice way to enhance the user experience. I like it and uh, definitely give it a try and play around with it. Also, for example, the camera can immediately go into selfie view, hello, or you can also immediately go into video mode and start a video. So these are then shortcuts that are directly available on the home screen for fast access. What they also changed is that you are now able to configure swipe down. Normally when you swipe down, this will launch on a search, right? You can search an app or search on the device. And if you pull on the left side of the screen, you will get to notifications. If you pull on the right side of the screen, you will go to the notification center. And 
you can from the notification center swipe right and again left to switch between notification center and control center. And now with Magic OS 8 you are able to configure this behavior so you can go into home screen settings and I searched it but home screen and style home screen settings and then you can configure what swipe down does. You can choose between on a search, notification or control center and you can also configure to um, disable swipe down. So now if I choose notifications or control center. If I swipe down on the left side anywhere on the screen, I will go to the notification center. If I swipe on the right side of the screen, this will launch the control center. So left control center, right, uh, sorry, left notification center, right control center. And again, I can also quickly switch between the two. And then you can decide to launch search, for example, via the search button down here. So click here and you will have the search and I think I will just leave this uh, like this. It's quite good because I'm, I like the search and I like to be able to quickly search for an app, but it's more than enough to have it here also on the second screen it's um, available. So this is great. This was, not, this was not possible in Magic OS 7. However, I still have some gripes and these gripes are related to the control center and the control center looks exactly the same like in magic os 7 and i still don't like the look of the control center i don't like how uh, hyphenations are made and how uh, line breaks are made you <laughs> you still have let me bring it closer you still have screens hot. Indeed, the screen is hot. Um, and some other funky stuff like... Also, is it really aeroplane mode or is it airplane mode, right? Um, screens hot is really the, the best. The other, th the other icons uh, are okay. Also, I still don't like the AI suggestions on top here. Um, you are able to change them. So you can go to Edit Shortcut Switch. And then you have the AI suggestions here and you can, for example, just take the sound and pull it um, onto the AI suggestions and then the AI suggestions will disappear and you will have the options or the icons here you choose. Um, so that's good. But in general, Honor, please change the look and the icons um, and the fonts and the font weight. Uh, I think it still looks very old fashioned. But in general, I like Magic OS 8 on the device, I like the software, and I'm also eager to see what the large language model will bring in the future in terms of more functionalities and more features. And that's it. That was my video about my first impressions of the Honor Magic 6 Pro. I hope this was interesting for you. If you have any questions or if you want to discuss anything with me, just leave me a comment and I'm more than happy to welcome you in one of my upcoming videos. Until then, take care and bye.